Man over here got a chain that go from motherfucking collarbone to collarbone. <laughs> Fucking chain go all the way across his chest. You think I'm about to? Ain't no, ain't no waiting. Ain't no anticipation. I want to hear exactly what this brother got to say. I don't have shit to say. I ain't even seen a chain like that. So whatever you do, you must be extremely good at it. Yeah. Definitely might might be. You have to be. For sure. Because who would even think that they would need a chain that go all the way across their chest? I mean, you got to know who I am when I come in the door. Yeah. You got to. What did this say right here? It said the landlord, right? Right. So that's just good advertisement. That's intimidating. It is? Because if I was paying bills somewhere and my landlord had a chain like that, I'm not paying my bills on time no more. <laughs> Put, we going, every time it's time to pay you, we damn near about to go to court. You ain't never going to see me, though. Shit. I've seen you enough. <laughs> that's a hell of a thing. All I had to do is see you once and to know that. I ain't paying my rent until the 10th. Yeah, I definitely get a lot of that. Because the money. landlord out here is just fucking my money off. <laughs> he begging my rent and he's buying chains. <laughs> no, I actually own a jewelry store, though. See? You got a jewelry store. You do yeah. not need my rent. No, why? Why not? I got kids. I got five kids. Oh, here you go. This I is, got kids. Just bills just like anybody else. This is the landlord talking <laughs> right here. Only the landlord will tell you. Man, I need my money like yeah. you need, yo. Yeah, I need mine. No, like I'm just you with you. <laughs> J-O-N. The black market is back open, though. And today, we are in here with the landlord. That's all I will address it, man today because he is the landlord he has a chain that specifically says the landlord that's your home bro. thanks bro appreciate a big it. salute to yep. everything that you got appreciate going it. on welcome yep. to the black market appreciate man. it man and pick you a camera and give him a brief introduction tell him who the landlord is what's up y'all so um my name is uh anthony goodwin i go by work out the landlord as you can see uh, i'm just a regular guy from north philly uh been through the trials and tribulations just like everybody in this room right uh been to jail you know, that's what really changed, changed my been. life. See, I ain't you been? Yeah. Ain't been, did that me change personally. your life? Yeah, that changed my life a lot. I've been in jail, I did six years. Damn. Following behind my uncle, because he was selling drugs, and you know, my mom was alcohol, everything, you know, just going through all that shit just kind of changed my life. Right. And then uh, I had purchased a house for like 5,000. That's what really changed my life. Purchased a house for 5,000, and now, right now, I'm worth like $15 million in, in, real, in real estate. So a five thousand dollar house sparked a whole yeah that's right revolution. Cause basically I just got focused more. Like I just got really focused. Like once I went to jail, I started reading books. I read a book called um, Rich Dad Poor Dad that changed my mindset. And then I read something called What Would the Rockefellers Do. Mm. So if you don't know what the Rockefellers do, um, they basically have generations of wealth. You know, hundreds they used to of millions. Pretty much own America. Own America. You know, I'm pretty sure you heard of the Rockefellers. Yeah. So that's that book right there changed my mindset. Like, yo, what the hell am I doing? I gotta be, I gotta be focused out here. Yeah. I'm trying to leave a legacy and have my, you know, my picture on the wall. So my, you know, my kids and my grandkids be like, dang, he changed our life. So that's what I'm on. That's that what I'm on. Take something different. It's yeah. still, it's still some no, Rockefellers still, around here. That a lot of people don't even know. Anderson that. Cooper. He's a Vanderbilt. He's no, no, Rockefeller. Google it. Yeah, uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt is his grandfather. Bro, oh, I thought he was railroad. I thought he was. I thought he was. Um, I know your trust fund, baby. I know that. Yeah, for sure. I be real. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, but he's a Vanderbilt. Okay. Yeah, so mainly that's what like kind of changed everything for me. Just that one investment, and then that, that house that I bought for five thousand, like ten years later, it was worth like four hundred thousand. You held it for that long? I held I still got it. Damn. I can show you the receipts right now. So what's your strategy when it comes to this? Uh, my strategy, right, like it changed throughout the years. So um, now, right now, it's something called the Act 135. You ever heard of that? Put me up. All right, so the Act 135 is basically like when you buy abandoned buildings, like say if you go to Pittsburgh, Atlanta, and buy an abandoned building over there, 
you can basically, if you see it's abandoned, you can purchase, they will give you, the city will give you abandoned houses just for you buying that house right there. You just gotta petition them. Once you give them the right petition, now they're gonna give you that house and now you're gonna be able to assume ownership and then that's how you get more hundreds of thousands. So that type of stuff right there, just understanding the community, understanding getting with the city council, that's what's really gonna change your life. It's really not about just being an investor. Mm. It's really about knowing the connections to get to where you need to get to. The network. Yep, exactly, that's what it's all about. So you started out in Philly. Yeah, I started in Philly. Did you, what, how soon did you move to other cities and start applying the same method? Um, I started, uh, after I came home from jail, you know, I, I started understanding and getting like in tune with me making millions of dollars in real estate. I'm like, you know what? Let me start teaching everybody else how to get. How Let me to ask get. you this. So as soon as you hit the wall, like I'm talking about, as soon as you got outside, your whole focus had switched to just getting money. No, while I was in there. Okay. Like I was like in college while I was, when I was locked up. I'm in college, like, everybody running around lifting weights, getting yeah. super strong. I'm reading books. So I'm like, I already know what I'm going to do when I got, come home because I already had real estate already. So once I came home, it took me like two years to get on deck. I had to build my credit up. Once I built my credit up, find some lenders. Once I did that, it was pretty much up because I had the houses already. Mm. So all I did was pull the HELOC loan off of those properties and I got like 300000 on my first couple houses that I already had. And That's then from all. there. I love a success story, yeah. especially when the main character is a brother. Appreciate it. And it's like taking the... Like you said, taking the worst situation with the jail shit and then flipping that shit beyond your wildest dreams. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna lie, I would've never thought I would be in this type of situation. But I always thought I would, you know, get money. Yeah. You know, that was just like in my blood. I'm like, listen, I'm gonna always get some money. But I was just getting it the wrong way. I'm like, I ain't doing that shit no more. Yeah, and now you look at how successful you are on the legit side compared yeah. to the streets. It's, it it's, no, it's no comparison. Right. Like I, like, I literally have millions. Like I wouldn't, I never made millions in in the streets. Like I don't think it would never happen. Probably for El Chapo and all of them. Other, I ain't, <laughs> <laughs> you know, not for not for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would never. We gonna get killed before the heaven or well, go to jail. Not. Yeah, or go to jail. Man, coming out of Philly, it's so much. You know, you know in the hoods and you know the the blocks to hit and what's abandoned and you know shit that you grew up around. Yeah. How much of that shit interests you now, like, being uh, in, in your status? Uh, really, none of that stuff interests me. Right. Like none of it. Like really, just changing the kids' uh, aspect on life. You know, that's what really, like, really, what I'm into. Like, I want to basically take them out of their situation, so you know they can do what I'm doing. Right. Of, but at the same time, showing them and telling them, like, listen, this shit is hard. You know what I mean? How much shit did you learn as opposed to how much shit did you already knew? I actually like learned how to run a business from selling drugs. To be honest, I learned a little bit, but you know, you got to, you know higher ups the people that understand things on a different way, but the business model, I learned that from doing illegal activities. Mm. But then from there, once I took that and turned it into, you know, real estate, I'm like, all right, look, this is this is really where it's at. And then just knowing the infrastructure, you know, you know, buying a house, you know, making sure you license, all those different types of things, getting with the city council, understanding all those aspects of life. That's what kind of changed it, right? Like really putting in the, the work, not not actually looking like it. What, what what advice would you give to somebody who might be in the streets right now? Got a few dollars, don't know what to do with it, man. I would say like if you if you're in the streets right now, I would say just you know get get with like five key people. You know the five key people is your accountant, your lender, you know a lawyer, you know making sure you have a good mentor, and making sure you just accounting like once you got all those five people locked in now you can actually grow your net worth your network is your net worth right. so once you got those people locked in then they will kind of guide you through your success and know what to actually put you in the right position damn that's crazy man how you built an empire off a five thousand dollar house yeah it's really it's really the mindset i would say the mindset once you got that mindset and then knowing what you want to be right i wanted to be more than you know just the average person yeah like i don't want to be the average like we all a lot of people's average i want to be successful i want to you know show my grand you know my grandkids you know my my kids you know what it what it's like yeah i was it's still exciting to yeah. you though like the the actual grind of going and finding these houses and these properties and single families and multi-families is it still exciting yeah you got so, the same drive no no so the single families that's for my mentees okay like i don't mm, yeah i'm done with the single right, family so my, my main thing is buying commercial real estate 
Uh, so I went, you know, 30 units, 40, 50 to 100 units. So that's where I mainly focus at getting those type of things because you're going to make way more money off of those things. You know, you're going to make millions in one year instead of making 50,000 or 100,000 check. When you really think about money, 100,000 is not a lot of money. Like, you know, 200,000 is not a lot of money. So you got to really look at it like, all right, I need five to $10 million or better in order for me to, you know, have, you know, have wealth. Yeah. And it's going to take you a long time to build it. Yeah, you know I mean? I mean, it might, it might. I mean, it's gonna take. It's gonna, see, the fast money goes fast. That's what. That's what the young kid. Everybody want to look like they got it. Like, you know, they want to buy the big chains. They want every. You know, they wear fake shit. You know, just to look like they got it instead of just putting the work in. Like, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna put the work in and I'm gonna really get. It. They rather buy 20 fake chains instead of actually really, you know, going out there and grinding and putting the work in. Yeah, man. Don't buy 20 fake chains. You buy you <laughs> one good fake chain. <laughs> That's all the fuck you need. <laughs> what, a big Cuban, right? A big fake Cuban? Nah, whatever, it whatever it is. Whatever it is. Just one? Just make no. sure. They layering them. Like, you know, they putting 30 of them on. Yeah, not even knowing that. You even, you blowing your own lie. Yeah. Because even if, if that shit was real, that shit would cost $40 million. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure, for sure. I think, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, outlook on life. You know, people want to just make, make themselves look like it. Yeah, man. And you know what? You can't even knock them. Nah, yeah. Some people need practice. I, I suggest that you get a fake chain first. Fake chain? Why? Because you need to know if you're going to be able to handle the responsibility of having a real chain. I think you should do a training period with a fake chain first. Because you don't know. You go out, you never had a chain. Yeah. Chains require maintenance. For you sure. don't even have the right wardrobe for this shit. Your chain getting snagged on shit. You got lint, you got t shirt yeah, balls all in your shit. Yeah. You know how that shit yeah, is. For sure. You done ripped the button off your shirt. You need to see how you're going to act with a fake chain. I, I ain't going to lie. I don't even wear my jewelry like that no more. Like, I don't even wear it. I mean, we got a jewelry store, so like, I only wear this when I come out sometimes. What made you want a jewelry store? So me and my me and my girl, like we uh, started like when I was buying real estate, like she was actually holding me down, you know, while I was in jail. So I had I had a pinky ring like this one right here. Say the landlord, uh, she en ended up pawning my chain, my ring, and ended up working for the actual jewelry store. So while while she in there, I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm like, listen, we by the time you get out of there, we gonna have our own jewelry store. I'm just on some bullshit when I'm locked up. I'm just like, listen, we gonna take over the world. But she actually believe in this shit. So when I. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the ladies who be actually believing the yeah, shit. You, you know when you locked up, they give you everything. Listen, I love you, baby. You know, I'm giving all that shit. Yeah. But I'm at the same time, I'm really believing in myself. So I go ahead, uh, when she come home, I had like maybe like 40 grand or something I saved up. I gave her like 20. I took the 20 and I just, you know, started building mines. And then we, we actually got a jewelry store. But we got a connection that God was leaving who, had, who owned the jewelry store she was in. So they financed us the 80000 and then that's how we started our jewelry store. And now, now, you know, we have, you know, we can make whatever we want. Rolexes, rings, watches, whatever you want. Bro, that shit is amazing. I don't even know if people caught that. You went to jail for six years and came home and still had $40,000. Yeah. I mean, for, see, I, I don't look at see, money the it's same not way. That, I'm not saying yeah. it. It's like, but just you had the right people around you who didn't fuck with your last forty. Yeah, my mom actually, so basically, yeah, my aunt fucked my money up before, so I learned from that. I said, mom, mom, hold me down. Like, mom, I went to my safety deposit box, that shit was gone. I had 60000 in there, that shit was gone. I came home, that's what really changed everything. I had 60000 in the safety deposit box. I came home, I thought I was going to come to the money. It was like 3500 in there. I'm like, God damn. I'm thinking, you know how you plan it when you got money, you planning your money out. I would have like, took that $3,500 and paid somebody to whoop the shit what? out of my auntie. I'm like, damn, and she live in one of my houses. And she would have been homeless, too. You know what I mean? So I would have waited till she fell asleep <laughs> with her shoes off and burnt the bottom of her feet. <laughs> with lights and, and make sure it leave that black mark under there, too. Yeah. Or I would have fucked auntie off. Yeah, she, she, got, she got me, but... I mean, you got, you know, it was dirty money, so it is what it is. It's mine, though. It was, it was. But, it's you know, mine. I always look at the glass as half full and half empty. Yeah. Every, no matter what situation I'm in. Right. Like, I always look at it like that. You should send her an empty box for Christmas. 
Yeah, she uh, she's still and she's still living in my house right now. You a good nephew. I mean, I gotta hold my family. Cause down. even my grandma would be like, you gotta get her the fuck out of there. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I was mad as shit though. <laughs> you know, you you planning your money out. You like, all right, look, I'm gonna do this. I'm right, gonna do right, that. Right. I'm like, thirty five hundred. What the fuck? Yeah. That shit is nothing. That's really like literally pennies to me. Right. So um, I just grind that money up and kept it moving. Yeah. So I kept it moving. I mean, you got a very positive spirit, man. Yeah, that's what it's all about. It's all about just being positive about anything. When you live once, so you keep harping on shit, like that shit is not gonna get you nowhere. Yeah. You complain that, man, I can't do this, I can't do that. It's not gonna get you anywhere. So me personally, what I do is, anything I do, I'm putting my full all into it, no matter what. You know, and that's like, outside of investing in real estate and all that shit, like just in life period, you gonna be able to go the furthest just by believing in what you do. Right. A lot of people don't do that. They just be on some bullshit thinking it's just going to come easy. And it never comes easy. Nothing comes easy. Nothing. Nothing worth having. Yeah, nothing worth having is going to come easy at all. Yeah. And where can they find you on social media? Uh, work, out, work out the landlord. That's my uh, that's my Instagram. Uh, you can follow me on that. I did. Uh, I just tapped in. Just... Yeah, you can follow me on that. Uh, we got a five-day challenge coming up, too. What is it? Uh, it's going to be like we're going to be teaching you everything. Five, every, like five days, we're going to teach you how to you know buy houses. Uh, we're gonna teach you how to get houses for free. Oh, actually, they got dollar houses. Before I get off, um, we're gonna be teaching you how to build houses from the ground up. We're gonna be teaching you a bunch of shit, but before I, before we leave, they got dollar houses right now in the world. You can buy a house for a dollar. Yeah, you want that play? All right, so basically, what it is is you gotta have a nonprofit. Once you get a nonprofit, um, the HUD houses, they're selling houses, they don't sell them for 25000 um, and under six months, you get to buy the house for a dollar, but you got to do it in the low income area to where though you're building your community. So basically what you want to do is you want to go to the city council, find her houses. Once you find those her houses, you want to make sure they was on the market for six months without being sold for 25000 And then you can actually go and get those houses for a dollar. Yeah, man. Man, you got a lot of catching up to do, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. For sure, I'm ready. I might as well, bro. You out here being the landlord. Man, I'm ready. I'm, I'm going to give me a chance. That's what my shit going to say. What's it going to say? Property manager, man. Property. <laughs> that shit going to be like this one. My shit going shoulder like to this. shoulder. My shit, you actually <laughs> got to put the shit on like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show you. Yeah, I'm ready. I got you, man. Whenever you come to, come to Philly, y'all, tap in with me. I got, what well, shit? You in Atlanta. I'm in, I'm in Philly. Let's get some dollar houses. And I mean, we could get. I'm in Pittsburgh, Atlanta, though. That's what. That's oh, what we. Yeah. That, that. Y'all know where Pittsburgh, Atlanta, at, right? Most definitely. Yeah, Used I'm, to have some of the best marijuana in the city down there. Shit, now they gentrifying that shit now. I know. Now it's probably even better marijuana yeah. now because white people would. Yeah, they. Yeah. They're bread. They got motherfucking all types of shit up there. Bro, I fuck with Philly though. That's a great city. Yup. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Shout out to Wallow and Gilly. You got to mention them anytime. Yeah, you got Philly. to. Yeah. It's shout out to Wallow and Gilly. That's and my shout guy. out to all them hard ass rappers out of Philly. Too. We got Y'all the got best some, rappers too. Got the best rappers. Out of we got the best rappers. <laughs> yeah, I fucks with all them niggas. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I was in Philly one time getting a haircut, and then I looked up the whole barbershop was praying. I was like, oh, so y'all just ain't even gonna invite me to pray, huh? <laughs> you Muslim? No, <laughs> but that don't mean I don't want to. Like you should ask. Yeah, for sure. They gotta I don't want to be the only one in here going to hell. <laughs> 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 That's funny, because then you, you Muslim, you ain't, you whatever. Anyway, this is your first time stopping through here. Yeah, it's my first time. So after we get some of these dollar houses, we need you to come back and let them know that it's real. For sure, we definitely going to do that. Now, they're going to use me as the example. I'm ready. We- That's why I'm the host of this show. So I'm going to actually have to go out in the field with you. Actually do this shit. So you going to do the work? You going to do the working hours, right? No, nah, you're going to know. I'm not. Bro, I'm a... Look at me. I'm a whole fucking asset. I thought you was a contractor. No, I'm a comedian. Oh, okay. My and point. like one of the coldest, so they don't need yeah. nothing happening to me. Okay. Like I can't afford Gotta to protect step bag. on a nail or miss swing <laughs> a sledgehammer or nothing. I can't pick up nothing. <laughs> I'm too valuable to yeah. the game. Too valuable. But we're going to hire the best people. Yeah. We always get the best people, right? You got, got to. The best people. If you're the best, you got to get the best. the best. We're going to get the best people. Yeah, I'm okay. so, Yeah, I'm ready. I'm, hey, I am too, man. I'm looking forward to it. And, and I'm, holding, I'm holding you to that. Y'all see that, right? 
Y'all see on the other camp. Listen. We on, we on. Listen. I'm holding you to that. Bruh. Come on, man. I, I don't lie on these cameras. You know how much these cameras cost me? Yeah, I can tell. I think I bought them to lie on? Nah, we're going to make it happen. No, shit just happens. Listen, dollar houses, but like, come on. Dollar houses. Nonprofit. You got to get a nonprofit. I got one. All right. This is man, up. I'm, I'm up, baby. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. I you forgot who you're talking to, to, man. Hey, yo, I really did. This is a non for profit organization. <laughs> yeah, man. J O N, you in? I know you got a dollar. You got five. Come on, man. Well, let's buy three houses and save the other two. All right, baby. It's a little process, but. Definitely, definitely so we locked in on the social media. Yeah. Uh, where can they find the courses and the information and uh, all of that? Just just go to uh, workoutlandlord.com or just go to workout underscore landlord. You're going to find everything that you need. Tap into our five-day challenges coming up. We're going to be teaching you a lot of game on everything, anything that has to do with real estate. Okay. Yep. The next five-day challenge, we're only giving you $5. Five, oh. Oh, it's oh, for real? Okay. Five dollars? That's it. Y'all got five dollars? Um, it's not five dollars a piece. <laughs> five dollars is the budget. Damn. <laughs> All right. We're gonna give you five days to flip that shit. Five days to flip. Well, I you flip in, you in, only get five dollars. I flip it in one minute. Nah. Uh -uh. One minute. I get ten dollars right there. None, none of go. that. No, oh. you no, it don't work no. like that. Oh, you you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> nah, you put you gotta put your chain up and everything. You don't get to wear no jewelry. For five days, no Louis, no no Cartiers, <laughs> none of that shit. You don't get to wear nothing fresh. Uh, you get five dollars, a white t-shirt, and some of them um, what's them shoes that just slip on with the, the little, with the little elastic shit right there? Not them skateboarders. Oh, the sketches. The little slip-ons. You get five dollars. Dang, at least give me some construction boots or something. No, no. All right. You get five. If you get that's on you. If you want to fuck up some of your money on some boots, that's on you. I'm going to Walmart. All right, we're going to see. Now, that's the fighting challenge. <laughs> yeah, right. I get it. I think I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen wherever. You heard what J.D. said. I turn, you know what I mean? Anything, that shit whatever. fuck around and get good. Nigga be like, shit, give me five more days. Now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe all the money I was missing. I got to start over. Nah, but I appreciate you stopping yeah. through the black market, man. Sure. And I appreciate officially got to let these people know that the black market is open, man. Yeah. The landlord, we out of here. Yeah.